California Democrats set to advance a new bill using taxpayer funds to protect violent illegal immigrants. I'm not kidding, from deportation. Well, what really keeps me up at night is the professional military subversive actors, which are essentially agents of chaos that could be coming across. Uh, so the definition of violent serious crimes in California, murder, rape, assault with a deadly weapon, and kidnapping. A controversial bill which would greenlight taxpayer-funded legal aid for illegal migrants has some Californians up in arms over concerns it could help violent criminals stay in the United States illegally. California, Congress, uh, California Assemblywoman Kate Sanchez joins us now. Uh, Assemblywoman, thanks so much for joining us. So what would this bill do? So it would give hard work. First of all, Brian, thanks for having me. It would give hardworking taxpayer dollars to fund and expand a program that would allow criminals, illegal alien criminals that have been convicted to stay in California. And not only that, it would expand it to those across the United States with that express the intent to come to California to live. Presidential candidates are focusing on the border crisis in Texas. We've learned that migrant crossings are shifting toward California, which has seen a sharp increase in recent months. Yeah, good morning, Marcus. So right now there's a nationwide debate across the country on just how much services should states provide? Well, a new bill right now in California looks to give illegal migrants legal services for the first time. Right now, California state law does not allow grant money to be used for legal aid for illegal immigrants who are appealing a serious conviction like a serious felony or a violent crime. But AB 2031 or Representation, Equity and Protections for All Immigrants Act would remove that stipulation, widening access to more services like interpreters, social services and litigation costs. This bill is expected to be heard in the Assembly Judiciary Committee in Sacramento later today, but it's already facing pushback from some Republican lawmakers giving taxpayer funded um, help to illegal immigrants to evade uh, and being able to stay in, in California in the US. So when I, we saw this bill, I said, I have to raise the flag, I have to raise the alarm and make sure our Californians, our hardworking Californians are aware of what's really going on in Sacramento. Democratic Assemblyman Reggie Jones Sawyer, who introduced the bill in February, insists the goal is to expand immigration services regardless if they can pay, speak English well, or have issues with the law before, in a statement saying, quote, For as long as I have been in state office, I have worked towards ensuring people are given a second chance and have championed efforts to prevent people from being treated as second-class individuals. Now, we did reach out to join Sawyer to give us a comment on this bill. We did not hear back. I have been speak, speaking with sources in law enforcement in California who do believe that if this is passed, it would actually increase illegal immigration into the state of California. I have to tell you, honestly, our California voters and, and people across the nation deserve transparency. They deserve that they, to know their hardworking taxpayer dollars are going, especially times such as now, are going to things that we want to reward in California, not to expand a program that would have allowed convicted illegal immigrants to stay here. This is just, it blows my mind. Honestly, it was some, one of those bills that you have to read two to three times. And it was shocking all the way through. If I was to put a number on how many in the assembly were prepared to vote for this, do you have an idea? Well, everybody up until last night, around 10 or 11, were prepared to vote for this today. We've got a new poll. It shows 62% of voters in California, of all places. They think the border's not secure, 62%. California is a deep blue sanctuary state. So you think, Chris, that the Democrats are beginning to wake up to the danger, beginning to change opinion on the border? The Democrats, that is? I, I do believe they are. I mean, if you look at uh, New York and Chicago, for instance, um, I think the people on the ground, the residents there are, are realizing the border is not secure and um, people are getting bust into their areas and it's uh, taking a lot of their resources. So I think people around the country, uh, especially in these large urban areas that are predominantly Democrat, uh, with predominantly Democrat voters, I think they're starting to wake up and realize that um, there, there is a big problem on the southwest border. But honestly, Chris, I don't see much change coming in the very near future. Do you? Unfortunately, no, I don't. You know, hopefully we will get something. But, you know, uh, hope is not a strategy. So which we have to wait for the election, perhaps. Why does the White House stick with this claim? It's obviously not true. You know, what we've seen lately is uh, is the White House is 
the, the claims they make just they're, they're all over the map. I mean, you look at what's happening out in, in Eagle Pass, you know, we're supposed to be securing the border. We're not securing the border. Um, you have Mayorkas constantly saying the border is secure. Obviously, anybody can tell the border is not secure. I, I don't know who they think they're fooling with this, but for some reason, uh, they're, they're pandering to someone. I think it's a very small minority that they're pandering to, but uh, apparently they think it's working and it's not. Basically, the left, the Democrats say that the border mess is the Republicans' fault. You disagree with that entirely? No, oh, well, 100 percent. I mean, if you look at the last administration, you look at the numbers by month um, and then you look at the numbers by month on this administration and you can see for yourself. And um, the administration wants to address root causes all over the, the world. But the the truth of the matter is the root cause is right here in the United States. It's uh, the, the federal government is allowing it to happen, so people are going to take advantage of that. The cartel now reportedly working with Chinese snakehead gangs to smuggle Chinese nationals into the U.S. as encounters with illegal immigrants from China have skyrocketed over 4,000 percent since 2021. Not to mention the 300,000 migrants that Bi the Biden administration is allowing to fly into our country using the controversial CBP-1 app. Here with Reaction, Executive Director at the Center for a Secure Free Society, Joseph Humeyer. Joseph, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, let's talk about the Chinese and Latin America and our open border. Tell us what's happening and why we should be concerned. That increase in number is astounding. Well, good morning, Rachel. Well, for, first of all, I think that that number, what that number represents is a convergence that's happening on our southern border between uh, international transnational criminal organizations, international terrorist organizations, and the, and the facilitators, the middlemen that run the logistics to make all that move, especially as it moves to the southern border. Uh, the second point, uh, Rachel, on that is that, you know, there's a lot of discussion, especially here in Washington, about separating uh, the Chinese criminal apparatus that's involved in fentanyl, that's involved in human smuggling, from the Chinese government. That, that's certainly what the CCP wants to have as a talking point. But you can't separate that. I mean, it's not like China is New Zealand and these criminals are coming from Europe. When you talk about criminals coming from China, they absolutely are linked to the CCP for one specific reason, because of the banking system. They all use the Chinese state controlled, in many cases, state owned banking system to be able to move the illicit money and the illicit funds from their uh, illicit activities. And so I think that this is it falls within the doctrine of what China calls unrestricted warfare, which they include criminal organizations as part of that warfare to attack the United States. Yeah, by the way, I had Joseph on my podcast this past week. It was one of the most enlightening conversations I've ever had on a podcast. I encourage everyone to watch it. And that was one of the most interesting parts. You said in the past, you know, there, people would launder money through Latin American banks. And now in Latin America, they're laundering money. The cartels are laundering their money through Chinese banks, um, something I had not thought about. And, and this connection is, 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 is very important to make. So what do you think this the Chinese are doing in America. What is your greatest fear? I mean, you know everything about um, national security um, and, and security in Latin America and what's coming through our border. What worries you the most? So what, what keeps me up at night isn't necessarily the criminals and terrorists. And that, that's bad enough, frankly. That is very concerning, alarming. I think we, our national security apparatus has to do something about that. But what really keeps me up at night is the professional military subversive actors, which are essentially agents of chaos that could be coming across and probably are coming across our southern border, and not just from China, but from Iran, from Russia, from Cuba, from Venezuela, from every enemy of the United States that wants to do us harm, because these are actors uh, that not only can carry out criminal and terrorist operations, but they could actually poison your food and water supply. They can learn how to shut down your electrical grid. They can radicalize and empower uh, uh, agitprop communities, basically people like Black Lives Matter, Antifa, you could put those on steroids. These are folks that go into other countries and create chaos. Uh, China, Russia, and Iran has these agents, uh, these subversive actors, and I'm worried that those are the ones that are coming across our southern border because it only takes a handful of them to create a lot of damage. Yeah, I don't understand why our government is not as concerned. I want to talk about this because there are Venezuelan gangs, the Tren de Aragua. Um, they've set up shop <clears throat> at our U.S. border. Um, they're coming across the border. I spoke with uh, Congressman Troy Nels, and he told me that Several years ago, he got intel from Border Patrol that our intel agencies knew that that uh, Nicolas Maduro was Maduro was emptying the the prisons. He sent a letter 
asking them to verify that and they never responded. Are, 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 you know Latin America so well. Do you believe that he emptied his prisons and that those are the, some of the people that are coming through? No, absolutely. That, that's not that's not a, any news for anyone that's been following Venezuela for the last several years. Um, there's a few things that I think the audience really needs to understand about Tren de Aragua. Uh, the first is it's the fastest growing transnational criminal organization in the world. Only six years ago, they only had a presence in two countries in South America, Venezuela, its home base, and its neighbor, Colombia. Fast forward six years, and they're now present in at least 10 countries throughout the Western Hemisphere, including the United States. I've never seen a criminal organization grow that fast. Not even the Mexican cartels expanded that fast. The, the, the second point to that is they've already destroyed South America. The Tren de Aragua has attacked and killed police officers. They've set up sex trafficking, human trafficking, and prostitution rings. They've basically taken over uh, Venezuelan communities in Peru, in Ecuador, in Colombia, in Chile. Uh, so they've pretty much destroyed South America. And in 2021, they started to move north. Why did they start to move north? It was because the Venezuelan government, the regime of Nicolas Maduro, created the transportation mechanisms. He created the logistics to start pushing north. Both national airlines, Conviasa, which was once a sanctioned airline, would fly uh, more flights to Mexico than any other place in the world sh shuttling these migrants. Two, they started to create the financing mechanism for the, many of the NGOs along the Darien Gap, which was once an uncrossable border between Colombia and Panama, and it's now pretty much a bridge between Colombia and Panama, where many of these Venezuelan migrants are passing through. And then the last point, Rachel, uh, go back to 2011. In 2011, the Venezuelan government stood up something called the Ministry of Prisons, right? And in the Ministry of Prisons, what it essentially did was handed over the prisons to the prisoners. They created something called Pranatos, which yeah. actually existed before in 2007. And the Pranatos was essentially like the warden of a prison of a prison, but that Pranata would be a prisoner. It would be a, a prison gang leader yes. that would be in charge of the order of that of that prison. So they created that system, and then they re, they used that system to weaponize it and to, uh, em, as you said, empty out their prisons and send them all uh, throughout the Americas and more recently to the United States. Exactly, Mark. You know, I spoke to someone who used to work in Border Patrol, and he says social media really helps demystify the process of passage into the United States, especially from the southern border. And if you take a look at CBP data right now, year to date this fiscal year there have been more than 18,000 encounters with Chinese nationals at the southern border that is already way ahead of the record pace that was set last year if you just take a look at some of the data we'll pull up for you fiscal year 2023 there were more than 24,000 encounters at the southern border with Chinese nationals up from 2100 the year before and 450 the year before that there could be a number of reasons why this is happening. That former Border Patrol officer says uh, that based on his experience, people are coming over because they may want to leave life in China. Often they fly through Ecuador because there's no visa requirement there. And then they make that long journey up to the Texas-Mexico border. And he says a lot of how they learn to do this is through social media. Social media, um, various platforms have become uh, an enormous tool in aiding illegal aliens uh, trying to enter the United States. Um, whether they're coming illegally, trying to abscond, or those that are surrendering at the border and claiming asylum. Department of Justice data shows that more than half of Chinese nationals who have applied for asylum have been granted that uh, last year compared to the going rate of about 14% on average for all nationalities. We have reached out to CBP for comment and are still waiting to hear back.